Well, good evening and welcome to the Arbor Hills Nature Preserve in Plano, Texas. Tonight's exercise is a battery endurance test of the Night Corps EDC-33. Now, I've already filmed the first field test. If you have not seen that, I will leave the URL in the video description. I would recommend that you view that first. Tonight what we're going to do is one of the two battery endurance tests that I normally do. This will be the simpler exercise where I take a light out, I put it in a specific output level, typically high or turbo. Tonight it's going to be high and then I just let it run until the battery is completely exhausted. We get an opportunity to see how it burns down over time and I'm going to periodically attempt to put the light in the two turbo outputs. That'll give us a very approximate indication if there are any issues with running the battery down to a certain level and not being able to access one or both turbo outputs. The second type of test I do will probably not be done with this light, but I typically go out to say the LBJ grasslands and I do what I call a lost in the wilderness test. So I try to simulate being lost, try to find my way back, and it's typically a multi-output, like partially medium, partially high, maybe a few bursts in turbo. I've done that with a few lights in the past, but tonight, very simple exercise, let the sun go down some more. I'm going to put the light in high output, leave it there. Other than those attempts to go into turbo, take it out into the reserve, and we'll see how long it takes to burn the battery down. Now, for comparison purposes, the stated ANSI FL1 runtime for high, if I remember correctly, is about two and a half hours. So keep that in the back of your mind and we'll see how things progress. All right, I just turned the light on in high. I've started the stopwatch. I thought that uh, since this is a battery endurance test and not an output test, that I could start a little early while there's still daylight and uh, show you a few things. This is my normal staging area. And if I come over here, you may have seen this area. I will sometimes do output level test here because it's more wide open and more exposed to light pollution. Then as we swing around, you can see the playground area there. That's where I do the uh, close proximity search test back in that direction is the picnic area where I typically film introductions. And then as we move down this incline, path keeps going downhill. Then eventually I come to the bridge where I do output level tests. So I thought people who are frequent viewers of the channel might uh, enjoy a little bit of behind the scenes. And here we are at the bridge there's a considerable line of sight this time of year with no leaves still in high and there's some noticeable heat build up in the uh, head area of the light so uh, how this burns down over time is going to be very interesting It's only been a little over 12 minutes. Uh, even though there's still plenty of light out, certainly for following a concrete path, I've been uh, spending some time off the concrete pathway. And it's very nice to have a light like this so that I can see shadowing along the way, indicating areas that I might trip or get in trouble. I can get... Uh, a very good idea of what the slope and direction of this dirt path is. Again, areas that I might get in trouble. If I had no light at all, I could easily get in trouble, especially that now that we're coming off of rain, some of this ground is real easy to walk along, and then 
some areas get extremely wet and so as it gets darker having this light to make my way across territory is very valuable so it's getting very wet through here so i've got to watch for soft areas in here that i might trip because it's also nice to scan out ahead and possibly pick up uh, eye shine well i'm just going to keep going Okay, time update. Now let me get my hands all switched up here at the top of the observation tower. That's about 35 yards out to the edge of that tree line. The heat level in the head area of the light has remained pretty consistent. There we go, half press and hold, full press and hold for the shield and back, so no problem getting up into the turbo Levels definitely got a boost up in the heat, but it's going back down now. Well, you know what, what's coming next. Got to keep going. And I've got my headlamp on here. You can see the current battery level indicator. Okay, I just crossed 42 minutes. Now, this has lost something from the time I turned it on. You can go back and compare the output from uh, the first field test, but this is still a very practically useful level of illumination. I would have you know, no problem getting back off the concrete path and going down here and following this for a while. Yeah, I've got no issue with this whatsoever. So, okay, yeah, it may st have stepped down a bit, but it's still, from a practical standpoint, extremely useful for making my way across territory. Okay, I moved on down the path. I've got my headlamp on 2000 lumen spot and the EDC 33 and high. And from here, I can definitely tell that's a small bobcat checking me out. And uh, mission time's a bit over 50 minutes, by the way. Okay, there's our update on mission time. It took me a minute or so to get set up here. As you can see, the battery indicator just clicked down let me uh, get my headlamp off there's the output level half press and hold full press and hold so at approximately 50 percent we can still get up into turbo time to move on all right there is current mission time let me get my headlamp off and you may remember this area so we've been running straight well over an hour and a few burst into turbo and yes yeah, so what it's lost a little something but i'm looking at uh inside a tree line a good 60 yards now if there was something reflective there, I could see it. I can't get any detail beyond the far trees. But, you know, you look at the uh, side to side here, you're still getting very good downrange and very useful spill. All right, got to keep on going. Quick update on mission time. Headlamp off. And it's been about 30 seconds, but we just went down to 25% level. There's the output. I'm back up to the parking lot. Okay, I moved up to the picnic area. It's only been about a minute and a half. There is the half press and hold, full press and hold on 25%. Okay, mission time update let me get my headlamp off i was on my way back up to the playground area i just had a very 
noticeable step down. You can see we've definitely lost something, but that was the first serious heavy visual ramp down. Okay, time update. We're back to where we started. Headlamp off. And we just took our second noticeable ramp down. And these are hard ramp downs. So getting pretty close to the end, it appears. Time update. It's been about 10 or 15 seconds right here and we just had another very hard ramp down let me get my headlamp off so you can see at this point i can just barely see straight ahead but i'm going to hang in here until it goes completely off so here we are at almost two hours and 20 minutes and still holding that final output level. A little over two hours and 35 minutes, same output level. So two hours, 37 minutes and game over. On the subject of battery, since my wife loaned me the light for a while, I did a drain test. What I did was completely charge it, then set it aside for one week, and then charge it again using an MH15, and it took less than 50 seconds to completely charge. So, that's it. Very interesting evening. I hope you got some useful information, and as always, until the next review, thank you very much for your time, and thank you for watching the video.